Hi, welcome to the course Probability and Statistics. In this introduction video, I'll talk about the overview of the course, and also I'll talk about the topics and the learning style. And finally, we're going to talk about creating. Um, probabilities and statistics are related branches of mathematics. They are pretty related, but not exactly the same. So in this uh, clip, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about what they are about. And um, and we'll see that uh, they are really related, but not not the same. Okay, so they are related because they they talked about uncertainty. Um, there are many kinds of uncertainties, like uh, in uh, if you have a die and you toss them, and you might get one, two, three, four, right? So you are uncertain about the outcome. And on the right, uh, you see the uh, the uh, the tornado, right? Um, and and people uh, don't know for sure where it would be at some point in time. So they have some projection that of the places where it probably be there, right? So in many cases, uh, uncertainty is about lack of information. Like in this case, we 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 don't know for sure. Like we know all the physics, right? But we don't know for sure how things are. Like like uh if if you know uh let's take a look at this uh like in in snooker right there's some uncertainties there's some chances because but but f the physics is clear but you don't know the the uh all the details of the data so there's some uncertainties but uh if you look at but but people don't don't talk about uncertainties about something uh, about physics, right? Uh, people say uh, last in in the last World Cup, Germany has fifty five percent. Does it mean that in the end they will they they will win? But actually, they 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 have just won, right? So uh, does it mean that uh, if you play the World Cup ten times uh, or a hundred times, uh, it will Germany will win for fifty five times? That's not possible, right? You cannot run World, World Cups over and over again. So what does it mean? Okay. Or, or if you have these coins, and people say you have a 50% chance of getting a hit from this coin toss, is this the same as this 50%? Is the same as this 55% for Germany? Or you may wonder if if you have a coin and you want to say uh is this a fair coin so these are the topics that uh sort of tie together probability and statistics okay so let's talk a little bit about the history uh in uh 1654 uh probability theory was born because pierre de fermat and and blaise pascal uh talked uh, they they sent uh, letters and 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 discussed uh, about how the fair division of stakes in an interrupted game of chance. So what what is it? Um, they talk about fairness. Okay. So what does it mean to be a division of stakes which are which which is fair? So uh, you may argue that it's about like. The person who is more likely to win should should get a higher share of the stake. So let's try to be concrete here. So imagine that th this is one situation. Now you have two players, and they are about to throw a fair coin, and the stake is a uh, hundred dollar, and th they made up this rule up. Uh, player A gets everything if the head comes up, and if the tails comes up, player B gets everything. So what 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 should each pay player get if the game is interrupted? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave you a few seconds to think. All right. Yeah, you can guess that uh, because. It should it should get uh, fifty dollars, but that what does it mean to be fair in this case? 
So let's look at another example. Okay, in this second situation, you have two players, and you they are about to throw two two fair coins, and the stake is again a uh, hundred dollars, and player A gets everything if both coins show up heads. Otherwise, player B gets everything. So what should be the fair division of the stake? So I, I let uh, I'll give you another few seconds to think. Okay, so player A should get $25 and player B should get uh, $55. Why? Why? And and why is this fair? Let's go back a little bit. You have two fair coins, right? Okay, we, 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 we'll go back later. But what does it mean to be fair like this? Now let's look at another third situation. So you have two, pl two players and if the head comes up, player A gets everything. But if the tails come up, both players will split the stake evenly. Now things become a little bit more complicated. So um, what what should each player get? You can pause the video if you would like some more time. All right. So player A should get uh, 55, while, while player B should get only 25. Again, we, ca we go back to the, question, the same question, what does it mean, what it means to be fair, right? Uh, one way to talk about fairness is like, uh, you can let the player play the game many times, and then take the average, like, so this is the fairness, like, uh, you get something as if uh, you play that many times and, and on average what, what you would get. So the question is, how many times, if, if you really want to implement this procedure, procedure for, uh, for fairness, how many times you need to do this? And, and can we calculate that without actually uh, playing the game, right? So the original question is that you, you, you don't, you want to play the, a game, and then it, it was the game was interrupted. So you want to calculate, right? You want you want to think about the future, think about something that is not yet to to happen. Right. So let's go back. Sit in situation one, what you split the stake evenly, right? Because from the game we know that they are equally likely to win, so we split evenly. Right, and in the second situation, where you have two coins, and the player A only wins when uh, both coins comes up uh, heads, right? And, and and it's more likely that uh, uh, there are four four cases, right? We will talk about how to compute this later on, but you can infer that uh, it's 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 more likely that play, player A will will not win, but this is not enough, right? You know that player B is more likely to win, but it's not not enough to uh, split uh, the stake by only like by by just knowing that one guy is, is more likely to win. You need a quantitative way to say that B B is more likely to win for like three times. So that's why he player B should get uh, three times more of the stake. And finally. In the third situation, it's it's harder because it's not that uh, it's hard it's harder to say who wins, right? But if you think this way, uh, you have player player A is equally likely to win either a hundred or fifty, right? So on average, he would get uh, fifty-five, and player B is equally likely to win zero or fifty. So the fair uh, stake should be twenty-five. Right, let's go talk a little bit about statistics. So this is about probability. So you have some model of the experiment. And you want to think about what should be in the future. Now, for statistics, 
the early use of statistics was to collect data and and you used to use that to for some planning and to do some analysis so in in 1662 grant and and william petty here uh uh collect the use the data for for dead dead uh and and produce some probabilities of survival and this give birth to insurance and all the financial stuff and in the early days there's no relation relationship with probability theory it start when uh in 1713 when jacob bernoulli uh published about law of large number and what is is this law of large numbers it says that we we, we have some experiment pretty soon but it says that if you have some uh some if you do uh if you take an average of something uh many times um you get close to the actual mean uh, of of this thing okay so so we will we'll talk about this later and then other developments follows and if you recall um fermat and pascal pascal talks about probability in 1650 something so this is about 50 years after that and now statistics use probability theory as as a basis for calculations okay and then you know Bayes theorem and then lie chart and bar chart and histogram and these are stuff that we are familiar in high school come at the later time right about maybe another 60 years after people start doing some calculations on on probabilities and statistics all right uh, what are there so from that from the introduction you probably can infer this picture so basically in probabilities uh we, we have model some some model of the experiment and we want to predict what what would have happen in in the future without actually perform it and for statistics you have some data and you want to you believe that uh, this data should guide you some to something should should help you to infer something about what's what is what generates this data so probability and statistics is somewhat uh in on the opposite direction okay okay so the topics that we are going to cover in this course is this for probability th theory so we'll talk about the basic concepts and we talk about axiom of probabilities, conditional probability, independence, and Bayes formula. And then we talk about random variables and expectations. And finally, we'll do look at some uh, application in computer science by analyzing some randomized algorithms. For statistics, we'll talk about sampling. And this will be related to what we talk about law of large number. Like, uh, if you have... Uh, if if actually you have a population and 10% of that prefer to drink uh tea and you do some survey and if you just survey two people may, maybe you don't you don't see this 10% average of uh, like the number of people who like iced tea right but if you sampling more and more people it get close to the actual value value of 10% and this is about the law of large number okay and um we'll talk about parameter estimations hypothesis testing regression and analysis of variance so this would be the statistics part of the course usually this is the second part and in this course you will learn in the flipped classroom settings so you should watch video lectures at home or maybe before class and in class, we work on some activities. So we're not going to have a lot of lecture. We, we might have some review, but usually you do some activities and you work with your friends. And you're going to, you have to work on some project as well. So you have to pick something and analyze something, use something that we learn to calculate something related to the co course, something that you like probably. And this is a scoring. Okay. So in class activities, uh, you get about like 20%, 19%, and the rest are uh, divided uh, equally. 
All right, and so see you in class. I hope that you watch, you're watching this uh, before class, but maybe you do that later or maybe in class. For this one, it's, it's fine. But next time, you should try to watch the video before class because it'll be more fun this that way. Okay, see you.